Unity's data-oriented technology stack is said to deliver performance by default, but what does that mean and why does that matter? So today I wanted to talk about game performance generally and talk a little bit about why specifically Unity's data-oriented technology stack is so important. And I would love to continue this conversation with you all, so feel free to share your thoughts on this matter either down in the comment section below or join us over on Discord over at tmg.dev Discord. And if you are interested in maximizing your game's performance, then you may be interested in the Unity Performance Task Force by my friend Ruben, aka the Game Dev Guru. It's a one-stop shop to teach you everything you need to know about game performance optimization in Unity, regardless of whether you're using Unity Dots or not. Talk a little bit more about it at the end of the video, but feel free to click the link in the description if you want to learn more about the exclusive offer we have available for just a few days only. All right, so let's talk about game performance generally. So what this really comes down to is player experience and player expectations. So in general, if you have a poor performing game, that's going to lead to a poor player experience. And poor player experience is really bad. We want to avoid that at all costs. But also going into player expectations, you know, players expect pretty much games nowadays to run at 60 frames per second as a bare minimum. And 120 frames per second is pretty much expected for most PC games. Um, now that a lot of consoles and TVs on the market are pretty much offering 120 frames per second um, as an option, then that's starting to be become more of the norm. So it's really important that our games are highly optimized so we can actually hit those high frame rates um, and not only hit those high frame rates, but actually steadily maintain them. Because if we are on those high frame rates and then you know we're constantly seeing dips and things like that, that's just going to lead to a poor player experience overall. Also for our CPUs being heavily taxed, this is going to increase the temperature of our CPU. Um, and on mobile devices, this can actually physically heat up the device as they're holding it in their hands, which is you know an absolute no-no. Um, and then for PCs, you know people don't like their computers running hot because that theoretically shortens the life of their components that they've spent all this money on. And of course, as CPU temperatures start to rise, then we start to run into things like performance throttling, where the game actually starts performing slower after the game has been running for a long time because, you know, our components have been heating up. And as a safety measure, you know, our systems are basically, you know, throttling them back so they don't actually overheat and cause, you know, severe damage. Another thing that could kind of be immersion breaking, which is also related to game performance, is having low quality quality assets. Maybe if you do just some like really simple optimizations and you do some like heavy compression, you know, you could actually end up with assets that just don't really look all that clean or maybe you have audio that sounds like it's coming out of a tin can. Of course, we want to put in place all these performance optimizations, but we don't want it to be at the expense of quality in our game. With these more immersion breaking type situations, people are much more likely to, you know, get broken out of kind of the magic of that game almost. Um, and kind of realize that this is a poorly performing video game and they're much more likely to go write a negative review about the game. Now the thing is about these negative reviews is I think they actually hold more weight than just a normal subjective review about a game. So for example, like a normal subjective review about a game might be like, oh, you know, I don't really like the gameplay because of this, this, and this reason. Um, however, these immersion breaking things, these are like objective things wrong with the game. You know, you can say this game is running at 20 frames per second. I'm constantly seeing textures pop in and out. You know, the audio sounds like it's coming out of a tin can. You know, these are actual objective facts about the game that people, you know, are very likely going to be experiencing if they download the game themselves. So when people actually read these reviews, they see like, oh, I don't want to play a game where, you know, maybe it's a VR game and there's constant like frame rate issues. That's something that actually like leads to you getting sick potentially. You know, that's when you see the types of negative reviews that actually really start hurting your sales numbers. So now we can start moving the conversation towards Unity's data-oriented technology stack, which of course is advertised as performance by default. So what exactly does that mean? Well, Unity's data-oriented technology stack, kind of as the name suggests, uses a data-oriented paradigm of basically coding games rather than an object-oriented paradigm. Now, the way that I kind of differentiate the two is to say that object-oriented programming, it's a little bit easier for humans to understand because it you know, makes a lot of sense to us. Like we have, um, say, this keyboard and there's a bunch of properties about it and there's like functions that it can do, things that it can do. Um, similar like a car, we can have a car and we can do inheritance on that car. So we can have you know different types of cars that share different properties. 
And that really all makes sense to us as a human. However, data-oriented programming is really you know, focused around the actual raw data and organizing the data in memory in such a way that it makes it much easier for the computer to understand and process this data, which is why we can get these you know, super fast processing times out of Unity dots. And performance by default also means that it's just optimized from the core. So what this means is if something's performing poorly, it's your fault. Just kidding. Um, it really just means that kind of your potential for performance is much higher. So now we can kind of start talking a little bit about why DOS performance is so important. You know, we see that computer hardware manufacturers are, you know, constantly pushing the limits of what computers can do. Um, and it's really us to up to us as software developers to really take advantage of all those hardware benefits um, that these manufacturers are putting out. So for example, we're starting to see monitors with up to 360 hertz limits. So can we actually make a game that runs at 360 frames per second? With Unity Dots, certainly we can. Of course, we're going to have to start to look at you know, performance optimizations to actually achieve that high frame rate of 360 frames per second. And unfortunately, there still are you know, limits of computing. You know, there's, there's always kind of like a little bit of a trade-off. If you want to implement something, you, know, you might need to scale back on something else. So that's kind of really what the whole conversation between game performance optimization is really about, is kind of finding um, you know, what works best for your game. But even ignoring performance on the high end, because you know, it's only a small percentage of people who are going to have the most expensive of computers with the monitors with the highest refresh rates you know a lot of people are just going to be running on kind of you know middle of the road consoles or maybe even on low-end phones and stuff like that and while we can use something like object oriented programming like people have been for decades for developing um, applications and games for these lower power devices um, you know if we do end up using something like a data oriented design pattern or unity's dots you know we can have that kind of extra performance headroom so for example if people run into some edge cases where they get like all of a sudden a bunch of enemies following them for some reason and and they just you know decide not to shoot the enemies and then they just really like accumulate this large group of enemies following them um, you know, maybe that is something in object oriented program that it might start to slow the game down a little bit, but because we have that extra performance headroom, now it's actually not going to dip the frame rate. Um, and people are still going to have a good experience with our game, you know, doing some things that they weren't, you know, maybe necessarily intended to by the developer. Um, but because we kind of have that extra headroom available, it's not really going to impact the player's overall experience with the game. And in fact, it'll probably lead to players having a better experience with the game because they are kind of like doing something in the game that they feel like they're not supposed to do and the game is still just running fine. And also one of the major benefits of Unity Dots is the separation of entities, components, and systems. Because of this, I feel that it is actually much easier to test out performance optimizations than it would be with traditional Unity mono behaviors. You know, the reason is, is because, you know, say we have some system and we do some performance analysis on it and we see that it's taking up a lot of system resources. So maybe we brainstorm a couple ideas of how we can optimize that system. Um, so we can pretty much just disable that system and then implement some new ways. Maybe we can break that system up into multiple systems and then kind of run some performance analysis on that to see um, if things start acting a little bit better. Or maybe we can kind of rework how our system you know, processes the data and see if um, by processing it in a different way, then we can kind of get some better results. Um, and so it's, it's much easier to do that when we have the entities, components, and systems all separated um, because we can just kind of you know, be a little bit more fluid with how our code is structured. And so I'd just like to close out this video by briefly talking about the Unity Performance Task Force. So as I mentioned earlier, um, I teamed up with my friend Ruben, the game dev guru, to bring you an exclusive offer for his Unity Performance Task Force. So Ruben, he's my go-to guy when it comes to performance optimization in Unity, as that's what he specializes in. He's worked with a lot of different companies, um, you know, highly focused on optimizing video games in Unity for maximum performance. So as a member of his Unity Performance Task Force, you'll get access to a new video each week that teaches you the specifics of how to optimize your development process, CPU optimizations, GPU optimizations, memory management strategies. There's really a lot of good stuff in there. 
I also do live lessons each month where you can kind of do some uh, interaction with him and ask him questions as he teaches some things on uh, Unity game performance optimizations. Also, by becoming a member of his performance task force, you'll get his performance checklist, which includes over 250 performance tips that you can go through to ensure that your game is performing at its best. And right now we're doing an exclusive offer where you can get the first month of your membership to his Unity Performance Task Force for only $7. We also do have options for um, unlimited seats for studios if you are a part of a development studio and you wanna get your whole team involved um, and learn performance optimization tips from Ruben, we do have an option available for that. If you are interested in learning more about the Unity Performance Task Force, go check out the link in the description below. It'll just be tmg.dev slash task force and that'll give you more information on the membership and everything that you get with it. Um, by the way, the offer is only available until Saturday night at midnight Pacific time, um, so definitely don't wait on this. Now, I've gone through many of the lessons in the Performance Task Force, and I learned so much in every single one. Um, you know, you learn all kinds of things, like from easy little simple fixes that you can put into your game to understanding more large concepts of game optimization. Um, you know, I really think that the Unity Performance Task Force is the most well-rounded performance optimization content that I I've came across. And I also will be doing a live stream with Ruben on Saturday morning at 10 a.m. Pacific time where we're going to be talking all about game performance optimizations. If you do have any questions for him about Unity game performance optimizations, you know, he's definitely the guy and we can address those um, in the live stream this Saturday. So anyway, this is a little overview about game performance generally, talking a little bit about Unity's data-oriented technology stack and why I think it is so important a couple of reasons why I'm excited for it. Um, so anyways, again, I would really like to continue this conversation with you all. So feel free to add any thoughts that you may have down in the comments section below or over on Discord over at tmg.dev discord. I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one.